This is the second lecture in the uh, looking at the FRG between the 1963 and 1989. What we saw earlier on was the politics of the FRG uh, up to about 1970, and especially the impact of APO or the extra parliamentary opposition. We saw that it was uh, the more violent wing through the Red Army faction. Uh, had a direct impact, but this was fairly short-lived. What we're going to look at now is uh, the another wing of the ARPO, which eventually grew into the Green Party, which had a more direct and longer-lasting impact. It started off as a single-issue party, focusing mainly on nuclear issues, nuclear power and nuclear weapons. Um, as a result of the oil crisis of 1973, which hit most of the Western uh, countries, basically because uh, OPEC, run through uh, or run by mainly Arab countries, put the price of oil up four times, uh, which had a direct uh, impact on the economies of the Western governments, mainly because Western governments have supported uh, Israel in the Yom Kippur War of 1973. As a result of this, the German government decides to build 40 new nuclear power plants uh, so that they don't have to rely on oil. Many people felt very uneasy by this, and you can see this in this poll uh, between May 1975 and uh, December 1976. The disapproval rating for uh, nuclear power stations went up from 28 to 47%. One of the key aspects of this, or focal points, was at Wackersdorf, which was a nuclear power station that was being built. And this became a very uh, important focal point for the more radical elements uh, in the Green Party. You can see more, quite a lot of direct action taking place there. By the time 1979-1980 came about, we see a right-wing shift um, in most Western countries, mainly because of the failure of the... Um, post-war consensus, um, and we see incumbents Reagan in the United States, Thatcher in uh, Great Britain, and also uh, Cole under the CDU in um, the FRG, uh, take a more conservative and radical conservative um, approach to a number of issues. It basically begins the new Cold War, and one of the things they do is um, ramp up the um, stakes in this Cold War by bringing in new nuclear weapons things like Trident and Cruise in Britain, and more specifically Pershing nuclear weapons that were stationed in the, uh, the FRG. And this brings about a huge uh, peace movement, which we see here in the photograph uh, in Bonn in 1983, where hundreds of thousands of people uh, gathered and protested. This leads to the foundation of a Green Party, which was much more broad-based than just the single issues of nuclear power. We're going to see a little bit more of the other issues they focused on a bit later on. Um, the growth of the Green Party we can see happening, first of all, at the regional level and at the um, start level, and then finally to the national level, where they overcome the 5% hurdle in uh, 1983. They come started with 27 uh, um, MPs and eventually 42 by 1987. So there is a, a gradual move away, especially at the expense of the SPD, the people, who, the, the party that mainly um, gains by this is the uh, CDU, CSU and um, FDP coalition, which basically becomes the dominant party throughout the whole of the 80s and the 90s. Um, in 1990, um, they joined up with the uh, German Dissidents Alliance, and finally in 1998, form a red-green coalition with the SPD. Um, this means that uh, one of the key uh, posts in this government uh, is held, uh, that, that of foreign minister is held by Joska Fischer, a Green deputy, which is eventually voted out in the um, or ousted by the CDU SPD Grand Coalition of 2005. Um, recycling was a key element of uh, one of the uh, cornerstones of the uh, the Green Party. And this happened much, much earlier, much more widespread than we see in England, mainly because the last 10 years we see a fair amount of recycling being done by local governments, but it was done on a nationwide scale by a number of, uh, by as, as a Green initiative, uh, right across much earlier on, especially in the 1980s. And so this is something that we see, and it's much done, as you can see in the photograph, on uh, much more specific things like not just tins and plastics, but all sorts there. 
What about the economy then? Well, um, we've seen how in the 1950s the economy really, really rocketed. A uh, huge, great big GDP moving from 1950 to about 1963. That couldn't be sustained, however. And mainly the reasons is, is because it was so phenomenal that it had to come down. It was still moving forward, but not at the same rate as it had been in the 1950s. The other reason for that was the um, East Germany cut off its um, labour force uh, from by the building of the Berlin Wall in 1961. Um, and also because of the fact that uh, the Bundesbank was frightened of overheating of the economy and so choked off the money supply and so this brought back the economy down to much more manageable levels. But it, was, it meant it was a great deal of fluctuation during the 1960s. 1970s as a result, as I said before, of the, the oil crisis, this had a major impact on the um, on the west, uh, on west Germany. Plus the fact you've got uh, an SPD coalition in power, uh, first of all by Billy Brandt and later on by Helmut Schmidt, which brings about a great deal more benefits. But because you've got rising unemployment, those benefits are taken up by more and more people, and this has a direct impact on the economy as well. You've also got a, um, a, a rise in, uh, the, in uh, immigration, mainly because of the choking off of the uh, supply of labour from the east. And this mainly comes from the, uh, the, uh, Yugoslavia and uh, from Turkey. And so this sort of creates a so what became known as a one-third, two-thirds society, whereby two-thirds became fairly affluent and moved forward. And then you've got this uh, mixture of the white working class and uh, immigrate, immigrants who don't have uh, many of the same uh, rights as the white Germans um, falling behind, uh, in effectively creating a one-third society. And there's a great deal uh, of, of, of trepidation and, and angst about this. Um, by the 1980s, you've got, as I said before, you've got a, a, a conservative-led uh, coalition. Uh, and this brings about um, a reduction in the amount of money uh, being given out and benefits and uh, cut cutbacks in a very variety of areas. This was going across the whole, most of the Western world at this time. Um, as a result of that, uh, a lot of the uh, problems um, that have been faced seemed to uh, go away. And by the late 1980s, the economy started to soar again, so that it becomes one of the three big economies across the world, including Japan and the United States. The government did take an active role in the reconstruction of the economy, uh, but this was never meant to be a complete control. As you can see, in 1982, it owned about 25 billion worth of assets, which included railroads, oil companies, largest national automobile production producer, Volkswagen and other firms. It decided to want to do a mixed economy, so it took an active part in development of the resources, but a free enterprise system remained. And some of those um, companies then were national, not nationalised, but uh, privatised a bit later on. But employment rates also fell from 7.6% in, uh, in 1989, despite the influx of workers from abroad, uh, abroad. However, this is stymied by Cole's decision in 1990 for a very rapid reunification of the East and West. And that leads to a stagnation of the economy uh, throughout the most of the 1990s. So what conclusions can we draw there? Well, the Federal Republic becomes a stable parliamentary democracy once the major problems of the uh, German autumn are sorted out in 1977. However, there is a continuity with the past, particularly under Adenauer. There's a rapid economic recovery leading to a great deal of prosperity, but this leads to many questions and, and problems of their own, especially from student unrest and higher taxes. If we were to sum up the whole of uh, the FRG between 1949 and 1989, we could say, um, for this quote from one of the leading German um, historians, sorry, British historians on Germany, uh, which uh, he called West Germany a viable democracy with a distinctly conservative coloration. And the way to see that is the fact that the CDU, CSU dominated governments were in charge for the majority of the period, except a brief period um, between 1969 and 1983, when the SPD had control. So definitely a conservative coloration.